This is the Fitzgerald River National Park in the southwest of Western Australia. This vast national park forms part of the Southwest Botanical Province. Within it, wild beaches, dramatic coastlines, rugged peaks, extensive woodlands, swamps and heathlands form a mosaic of habitats. We embark on a journey through this region to explore its astonishing treasures. Nowhere in Australia but here can so many wildflower species be found, with many of them endemic. The first biodiversity hotspot we visit is Stirling Range National Park. With its sharp peaks rising abruptly above the surrounding plains, this reserve forms an island of sorts where rare and unusual plants have survived the advance of agriculture. These stunning peaks are formed from sediment laid down about 2.5 billion years ago. Covering an area of around 1,000 square kilometres, the park protects more than 1,000 flowering plants including many orchid species. One of the character plants of the reserve is the Kingia. During the wildflower season between August and October, there are flowering wonders everywhere. On the northern side of the park, large sand plains display quite different vegetation. Here, smoke bush and sand plain cottonheads thrive. Our next destination is Tozer's Bush Camp, a private reserve 16 kilometres west of Bremer Bay and close to the Fitzgerald River National Park. Known especially for its orchids, the reserve also offers other treats for plant enthusiasts. Our next destination is Fitzgerald River National Park, a true botanical nirvana. The first venture into the immense, almost 3,000 square kilometre large reserve leads to striking forests of colourful royal hakea. Growing up to three metres tall, this is the signature plant of the National Park. The eastern extremity of the park is dominated by East Mount Barron. This section is easily accessible from Hopeton. Plant lovers can find many of the more than 1,800 plant species growing within the reserve in this area. 250 of these are rare and 62 are only found within the borders of the National Park. Cave Point, not far from East Mount Barron, is a scenic jewel and reveals the rugged coastline of the park. The 25 metre high mural on Ravensthorpe's grain silos is a giveaway. Besides agriculture, it's the wildflowers that drive the town. Painted by artist Amuck Island, the mural depicts the six stages of the showy Baxter's Banksia. North of the town rises the Ravensthorpe Range, a highly mineralised row of gentle hills. Along a fire trail that follows the ridgeline, we explore its extraordinary flora with many rare and unusual plants.
a number of new species have been identified here in the recent past. One of the signature flowers in these hills is the beautiful quail up bell. Another oddity is the tennis ball banksia. Local Sue Layton, an avid flower fan like most town folks, is showing us the endemic Ravensthorpe bottle brush hiding in the dense bush. Extremely rare is the very recently named Eucalyptus Ravensthorpensis. And there's much more. We now head east, past the town of Esperance, and visit another coastal reserve, Cape Le Grand National Park. The reserve is best known for its spectacular beaches and bays. One of them is Little Hellfire Bay. Another coastal gem is Lucky Bay. Besides its scenic beauty, the National Park has another draw card, plants. At the base of Frenchman Peak, local flower enthusiast Mary Hoggett demonstrates the clever mechanism of the trigger plant. With us on this botanical excursion are Environmental Officer Katie White and Ken Mills from the Esperance Wildflower Society. We don't have to go off track. Just strolling along the walking trails reveals an exciting amount of flora, often dominated by Banksia. The awesome display of smoke bush is eye-catching. It's growing on a slope near Frenchman Peak. Like a mass planting in a garden, the impact is dramatic. For us, this is one of the most memorable features of this diverse national park, and a fitting end for our exploration of the plant-rich Southwest Botanical Province.